people. Right. I mean, I I vote the weekly or whatever when mm. I don't know, when right. I don't have my own opinion. I just go to my nearest progressive source voting guide. But, you know, that's I think that's the difference. You know, everybody can get behind the fact that we don't like Trump and we're, we're going to go out on the women's march and mom is going and here are the pussy hats and here's my sign. And it's a it's a fun go see do, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and I'm not in any way speaking out against, you know, public right. protest. I think that that's it's, a huge it's part the of it. But if is... it doesn't result in, you know, participation in, in government, in the electoral process, what's it for? As, Nothing. As I have said way too many times on this show, the, the problem is the people who, who like to say everything happens for a reason, uh, yeah. but then don't give a shit about what that reason is. Yeah. Well, and the also, reason is important. The reason determines your next course mm-hmm, of action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the people it want, should. They, they're, they're focused on money. See, they don't, they don't look at the part you say, hey, if you vote, this is going to get me the things that I'm trying to fight yeah. for. No, no. They're looking at, hey, I want to, you know, from whatever uh, career they're going after, their girlfriend, their friends, they're focused on all of that. We are, you know, that's why when they complain about people coming in from other countries and taking jobs from them, that's because those people, their focus is totally different than ours. They come in and we, I mean, we're lazy. Yeah. I mean, our kids are spoiled. Yeah. These kids are coming over. I mean, like you said, we're in another country. If you're in Denmark and you went to college for free and you have you come in, you can come in with two or three degrees and come right over here. Who's starting more businesses in the United States more than anyone? Foreigners are. Mm-hmm. And they come over, they get the loans, they start their businesses, and they have this whole family you know, structure thing. And it be it the really thing be. that I don't understand about the you know the all about people not participating in local elections is that that's the stuff that actually affects your life on a daily basis. Right. I mean, national elections, yeah, sure, but to borrow a phrase, I mean that's pretty much a trickle down deal. I mean right. that's going to happen out there before it comes on home to your block. But a local election, a municipal election. That has to do with your very neighborhood. Well, here's here's a question then. It, as I mean, because admittedly, we we are living in a bubble, being in mm-hmm. Los Angeles yeah. in Southern California. Do you think part of the the blame for voter apathy goes to the fact that we, you know, California is a blue state? It's a difficult and yeah. being being in Southern California, LA specifically. We got it pretty good. So yeah. I mean, you, you know, know, a lot of the a lot yeah. of the shit that's coming down from the Trump administration yeah. isn't necessarily going to affect us because Governor Brown uh, is and, and and our and our senators are voting our right. Senators, and, you know, our, our mayor, you know, everyone got, is saying, yeah, yeah, fuck that noise. We're California. We're Los Angeles. Yeah. And we got a good thing going. We know how to keep it going. We will fight the federal government on this. Yeah. Yeah. So to to a large extent. Uh, you know, I, I, I've talked about this before, but the, the night before the election uh, in November, I was out with my best friend uh, and we had both gone to school in Missouri. We're both from the Midwest. And he was you know, looking at 538.com. It's pretty exciting. Right. And I said, you know, I, I don't know, uh, you know, what we've seen happen in, in the Midwest, in Missouri, especially uh over the past you know 10 years it i i i think of course california is going to go blue that's not going to be a problem i'm worried about what the rest of the country is is Mm -hmm. thinking and doing and unfortunately the the next day my worst fears Yeah. yeah became reality um but you know to an extent i i think we you know we do have a level of voter apathy here in la specifically and yeah. and with the kids because a, a lot of the bad shit is just stuff they read about online they they aren't seeing it in their day to day yeah it's true mm-hmm. it's true but they will <laughs> yeah they will. well and if if i can you know we were, we were talking about taxes and and getting involved on the local level if i can just bitch for a minute about one of my pet peeves uh because th- uh, this is the end of the first full week of april Meaning that for one week, cigarettes have been ten dollars a pack. Oh my God! Are uh, you still smoking? Well, I I'm still uh, uh-uh. going through the the cigarettes that I brought back from uh, my trip abroad, duty free. <laughs> but when those are gone, I'm done. So I'm I'm about to get a lot angrier. Uh, 
Yeah, 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 yeah anger. Yeah, yeah, it's the the bitterness of someone who realizes I I might actually live I, longer and have to deal with more of this. Oh my god, it's now it's what? tragic. Uh, but you know, I've I've been talking to smokers, and I I very few things have infuriated me this week, like the people who are smokers but say that they voted for the tax. Because they figured it would help them quit smoking. How is that different from people who vote against abortion because there's no way they're going to have one? Yeah. Speaking about men and, you know, uh, some women who, well, yeah, you know, I, I guess, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice. But I'm not going to have one and I don't support them, so I'm not going to do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to vote sure. to ruin I'm, this I'm for fall. everybody. Well, there's, yeah, there's, I'm not. There's a certain logic to voting to increase your own taxes, if as a punitive thing. Um, yeah, but you're yeah. ruining it for everybody, not yourself. I know, but you know like, what? This I don't. Is well. I don't. You're you're basically saying I don't have the willpower and strength to do this on my own. So I'm going to no, make no, no, everybody no. Listen, else miserable to make it easier a, for me to quit smoking. As a non-smoker, smoking. I'm just going to get on here and say <laughs> you're ruining it for everybody every time you light up a cigarette. So what are you talking? Every what what do they oh. say? Every cigarette takes ten minutes off your life. I buy no, by, it by takes smoking. All, it takes ten minutes off my life and whatever I'm trying to do when I'm trying to eat a meal and somebody's standing outside smoking a cigarette and I'm smoking it with you. It's I, I say tax those fucking things. Tax them as high as you can. It's, it's, it ain't it's, no good. It's interesting. You're, yeah, you're not getting a lot of sympathy. You're not going to get a lot of support from, from this. I'm not, I'm not no. looking for sympathy. I, I'm just. I know I'm right. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> Sure you well, are. Well, I mean, what's the worst going to happen? It discourages you from voting or from from smoking. Sorry, <laughs> from smoking. <laughs> I was going to say it's not rolling up the ballot and smoking that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it would be interesting if more smokers showed up at the ballot to uh, just for that that particular measure. But uh, uh, maybe, maybe they didn't because they knew they weren't allowed to smoke <laughs> in the polling place. Right. They're like I can't. <laughs> I can't, I can't stand in line for five minutes. The lines are going to be long. I can't go that long without a smoke. Uh, All right, yeah. listen, I got five minutes before I got to go move my car. What do we got? Well, one hour, then, got one more well topic? we started, we started uh, kind of getting into it a little bit with uh, the new Supreme Court justice. But one of the big stories this week was the revelation, oh, Kel Supreme's, uh, that, hey, Bill O'Reilly has more oh, sex yes. harassment accusations coming against him. Uh, this seems to be part of the big business culture at Fox News. Uh, and uh, two weeks ago, Donald Trump uh, declared April uh, Sexual Harassment and Violence Prevention Awareness Month. <laughs> and he <laughs> celebrated by saying Bill O'Reilly is a good guy. I don't believe any of the, any of the oh my God. Uh, accusations. Oh Take my it God. away, Erica. You know, I knew there was a subject I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Except I feel like all these sub- subjects just go right back round to, the, to, you, to you, time, and the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy, <laughs> the hypocrisy. I mean, it's all, it's just the same thing being recycled through different subjects, whether we're talking about bombing Syria or, you know, molesting women in the workplace. I mean, it's all the same. This is a group of people, and by people, I guess I mean, you know, Fox listening, old white Republican men who have this sense of entitlement to their own fucking reality. And, you know, I I think it's interesting how the world has come down on Bill Cosby when Bill O'Reilly has the same body count and is just <laughs> is just as bad, but you know, but he's you know, he's Papa Bear. Uh-huh. So uh, hey, he wrote know. books on Abraham Lincoln and Jesus. So he exactly. Was, yeah. I mean, yeah, you with, know, both rife with factual errors. But what is interesting, and what's curious to me, is remember back in the election, and we were when we were like gaming the election, and what is Trump really after? And he was, you know, all, he was in bed with Steve Bannon and Nigel Farage, and I was like, oh, he. Everybody was like, oh, it's Trump Media, it's the Trump Network. He's setting up the, you know, he wants to supersede the Fox Network. And that was we were sort of running with that for about five minutes. 
And now I'm wondering, like, where is the Trump network? Because Fox is going down. I mean, it's, yeah. it, you they know. Lost 20, he lost 24 uh, sponsors. Yeah, I mean, ba- right, big, They're still, big they're still giving money to the network. They're yeah. just not, they're not not, their ads aren't well, running on out, his show but, anymore. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, he, Bill, uh, you know, I, I so don't why, watch uh, the O'Reilly a good factor. Point. I wouldn't, but you, you figure his advertising is down to uh, Well, why you know, did you take off the Cosby show, but you haven't catheters. taken this guy off? Because because the people that watch Fox News refuse to, you know, it's it's what because we see we from, the right and from the right. Because we are a racist country, and we cannot stand. But this the isn't idea. just about the racism. This I think this is more about the the willful ignorance. You, you got to get to fifty four though, too. That's the magic number. Fifty four. When you get fifty four women accusing you, then you yeah. get off. You get <laughs> yeah. <off> right. <laughs> Or or fifty four advertisers. Yeah. I mean, this out. whole group—it's just a bunch of fucking rapos and perverts. Let's just. <laughs> but you know what? Now, now but, you'll get but some of them, of I'm help. sure, are good you, people you, you know, who you. climb to the top over the bodies of women. I mean, you know, it's it, it, it's it's the same. I mean, what? Well, guy. you know, one thing about it—you you brought up a good point. The millennials. And they talked about this. They were saying, okay, which which women had problems with this and who now that things have changed? Because in the 40s and the 50s, it was like, oh, Han. They, oh, that's just how men are. Yeah. Now, as it moved forward and we get 60s, 70s, we're into the 80s, they stopped all this. They said, hey, dude, you know, you're going a little bit too far. And then when they started really dropping the hammer on these guys yeah. from uh, – What's her name with Judge Thomas, uh, yeah. Ju- Judge Thomas, and all this stuff? They start letting these Anita guys Hill. know. Anita yeah. Hill, that's what. Yeah, you know. So you you get into this, and now you're at the millennials. Okay, the yeah. millennials are like, you better not even smell their way of looking mm-hmm. at stare whatever you can't uh, microaggressions. say. Microaggressions. You no, know, you better not even talk. So if Bill O'Reilly is still that stupid, now the only reason why he would get caught like this is because he believes mm-hmm. I'm above the law. Yeah, he and I don't, I, I don't think that you can get me. And, yeah. and now, his girl Megan Kelly and all the people when Megan when Megan stepped up and all the stuff. Oh yeah, it's yeah. coming down. They're dropping the hammer and they, this. Uh, what's the woman who's the psychologist? Uh, he hit on her. He tried to get her to come to his suite. You know, she said she was speaking up for the other woman because a lot of women are on gag orders. They mm-hmm. can't speak. Yeah. So they have already received their money and they can't say anything. So this one woman who's a psych, I guess she was on the show, he promised her something. And so she's leaving dinner, and he's, he, she's like, well, where'd you go? And he said, no, 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 this way. Let's go to my suite. And she's like, oh, uh, I can't do that, you know. And by the way, uh, and she is a married woman, so yes. uh, sanctity of marriage, of course, yeah. very important and he to these is, And after she turned him down, oh, he went, he went ballistic. He Boy, I tell you, I'm on my own gag order every time I think about Bill O'Reilly's <laughs> nasty little fucking chubby. <laughs> Ugh, God. Uh, That's disgusting. How did these guys even get... It's just power, you know. I mean, you know, nobody in their right mind would want to have sexual congress with Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> But oh, you, you use terrifying. the word Congress, it sounds like. Yeah, well, and, I know. Well, and, it is a political podcast, yeah. so I'm trying right to keep mind. it. <laughs> it's the, the two don't seem to have any anything in common. Yeah. Oh, my God, you guys. All right, I'm going to go get a parking ticket if I don't leave. All yeah. right, well. All right. Bye. I, I th- thank you uh, for being on the show, Erica. Uh, thank you, Erica. Anything Love to you plug? Guys. Uh, absolutely fucking nothing. Oh, okay. right. Thank you very much. Everybody listen to this How's podcast. The How's the book? The book is nearly done and it's going out to publishers ASAP. Go. Okay, so. good. Right on. Yeah. All right. Well, publishers, uh, beware, be, be on, <laughs> on note. See you uh, in two weeks. See, uh, two weeks, I guess. If sure. I come back. Yeah. All right. S- sounds like a plan. Toodles. Uh, Jim, anything you'd like to plug? Uh, no, no, just, uh. Doing my shows with you every Sunday, pretty much. Pretty much. News, <laughs> uh, on La Brea, 759 South La Brea. There we go. 7 p.m. Sundays. And go go in and grab a bite. <laughs> you might want to tell him to eat something, Jim. Oh, that too. <laughs> Timon, anything to plug? Uh, not right now. No, just, uh, you know, still out there working on stuff. All right. TV show done. And well, and good luck with that, uh, investors. Uh, we got a great show uh, that you should be taking a look at. 
in contact time. And as for me, I will be hosting the show that Jim was just talking about, Seismic, happening this Sunday, tomorrow night, uh, April 9th. On the show this week, we've got Solange Castro, Ed Galvez, Shirley Smith, uh, former panelist here on this show, Keith Kelly and Sharon Spell. I'm Dr. David Robinson. I uh, want to wish a happy...